حي على الفلاح حي على بيجينا محمد ولا آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما أجمعين إن شاء الله بإله سبحانه وتعالى انكريز ان all of us knowledge Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, it is so easy. You are going to love it and you will become expert. In two days, you will become expert. Okay. At least, this is only Mahdi we are doing. Are you with me? And when you learn this, brother, you become expert in conjugating fiel. If I write down any verb, uh, which is uh, which does not have any weak letters. I'll explain you what weak letters are later on. Then you will be able to conjugate it in the Madi. Huh? We have to learn Mudaria later. Yes, Sunny. Madi is the past, past tense. tense. Madi is past tense. There is a nice joke, brother, that my teacher told me. Uh, he said when. Children from India and Pakistan come. When students from India and Pakistan come, they have been drilled so much in madrasas to conjugate verbs, they become really very uh, proficient and they become expert. So this young fellow came and he said, you know, I know verbs very well, you know. Give me any verb and I'll conjugate. What did I say? He said, give me any verb and I'll conjugate. Okay. Teacher said, is that so? Okay. So he wrote a verb, three-letter verb, brother. No problem. He conjugated. Okay. 
He said, what did you do? I, he said, I conjugated the verb. You know, you just wrote this verb, you know. He said, it, there is no such thing in Arabic language. It does not exist. How do I know? <laughs> to me, it looked like a verb, so I conjugated it. <laughs> so, you know, even if it does not exist in Arabic language, I will still conjugate it. <laughs> now, brother, another thing I want to point out, that's going a little bit in detail, kind of a going in a little bit too much detail, but because I'll be repeating it all the time, you will, inshallah, remember it. If you don't remember today, it doesn't matter. It's normal. But let me repeat, brother. How many forms of verb in Madi? 14. According to 14 pronouns. Are you with me? How many forms? 14. Huh? Okay? 14. 14 pronouns. Every pronoun has its own form in Madi. Okay? But starting from... Hua up to Huma, you saw that the Lam Kalima has a vowel sign. Okay? And then the file which is attached to it, does it, does it have anything on it? Sister Salma, what is on this Alif? There is no vowel sign. If there is no vowel sign, then what is on it? Sukun. We don't write, but we know there is a sukun on it. You got the idea? If there, is, there are three vowel signs. Eh? If on any letter of alphabet there is no vowel sign, it means there is a sukun on it. We learned the first day. Eh? So there is a sukun here. And there is a sukun here. And there is a sukun here. So all the files which are attached, they have got sukun. So we have two which are mustatir. Huh? Are you with me? Brother, I'm trying to explain you. It's a very deeper concept. But I want you, because this is a very special class. You know, and you are very special. I'll explain and explain again, inshallah. And you will, inshallah, understand well. And once you understand this concept, brother, things will become very, very easy. The scholars have divided those 14 forms of Mahdi into two groups. One group consists of five. Are you with me? Okay. In which I can see file in three of them. And the file has sukun. Huh? And then two are mustatir. But the Scholars took that two also has a part of these this five, and then they call this uh, they call it sakin pronouns. What they call it? Sakin, sakin pronouns. What they call it? Sakin. What is the meaning of it? Sukun. That the pronoun. This is a pronoun. This is a pronoun, and this is a pronoun. <laughs> So, sakin pronouns. Now, come at the other group. See, I deliberately made two groups. Come at the other group. Do you see files there? What kind of uh, signs are there? Every file has a vowel. Huh? See? Na, ta, tu, tu, ti, tu, 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 na. Huh? Later on, you can break this tum also into different section. But for the time being, we will say the file is tum. Huh? Later on, when you go deeper and deeper, you can still have further explanation. That what does this mean doing here? But that we will do in book three. We won't bother about it now. Right now we say tuma is file, tum is file, tunna is file. But as you can see, there is a vowel sign there. So this group is called, brother, mutaharik pronouns. What do you call it? Huh? Okay. I will write down, brothers and sisters. Hmm? Sakin pronouns. Now pronouns is damair. 
Damir is singular and Damair is plural. Sakin Damair, you can say. And then Mutta Harrik. Mutaharikun, you can say. Mutaharikun, pronouns. This division, later on when we learn the weak verbs, will become very handy in our hands. Very, very handy in our hands, brother. So all you have to remember, what is it? Sakin pronouns and mutaharik pronouns. Huh? Very soon it will, you will have a good grip on it. Sakin pronouns are the first five. Hua huma hum, hiya huma. That's it. And then what are mutaharik pronouns? Nine of them. Hunna, na, uh, hunna, anta. Antuma, Antum, Anti, Antuma, Antunna, Ana, Nahnu. They are called Mutaharik pronouns. Now, if I ask you, why do you call them Mutaharik pronouns? Because on the vowel, on the files, there is a vowel sign. Why do you call this Sakin pronouns? Because on the file, huh, which is the Damir, huh? remember, the files are all pronouns. The files are all pronouns. It has got, it has got sukun. But the, what is this alif doing here? It represents huma. What is this wow doing here? It is de, hum. So this wow is equal to hum. Alif is equal to huma. Sahih, brother? And then same is huma. And then if I say, what is this na doing here? It represents hunna. Huh? That's a pronoun hunna. And what is doing ta? It is anta. Are you with me? What is tuma? It is tuma. And tum, it is antum. What is ti? It is anti. And then tuma, antuma. And then tunna is antunna. And what is tu? I. Ana. And what is na? <coughs> Nahnu. Are you with me? I will be repeating them, brothers and sisters. If you find that today it is too much to swallow, don't worry. Huh? Huh? Mutaharik means having harakat. Okay, vowel signs is in English. What do you call it in Arabic? Harakat. What do you call it? Harakat. Huh, Brother Muhammad, what do you call it? Harakat. Huh? And mutaharik means it has harakat. Mutaharik means it has harakat. Are you with me? Harakat. Harakat, you know, plural. Huh? Huh? Harakatun is singular, harakat is plural. Huh? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? If I say sakin pronouns, means those damir that come as a file with the verb, they have sukun on it. And if I say mutaharik pronouns, those pronouns, those damir, those damair, which come as a file, has got a proper vowel sign. Is it clear? I will repeat one more time. Huh? Sakin pronouns are those pronouns, brothers and sisters. It is only five of them. Okay, it's a group. But truly speaking, there are only three. The two are mustatir. They have, those damair, have sukun on top of them. Opposite to that, we have mutaharik pronouns, and those pronouns have proper vowel sign on it. That is why they are called. Now, do you know from this conclusion, if it is a sakin pronoun, then the third radical has a vowel sign. If it is a second pronoun, then the lam kalima has a proper sign. vowel sign. And if it is a mutaharik pronoun, 
then the Lam Kalima has to have a Sukun. Huh? So that will make things very easy. One more time. If it is a Mutaharik pronoun, then the third radical, which is Lam Kalima, should have Sukun. No, otherwise it will be incorrect. And if it is a Sakin pronoun, then it will have a proper vowel sign on Lam Kalima. No, brother, I, I have given you too much. I, I do I'll realize it. Huh? It's mixed up there. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. I think I'm mixed up. You got mixed up? I don't blame you, brother. You can blame the teacher. Because I, I gave you too much on one plate. If it is a mutaharik pronoun, then the lam kalima will have a... Lam kalima will have a... Sukun. I think I said it properly. You did not know. And yes. And it's supposed to have the vowel sign. Okay. Yes, yeah. but what I am saying that if it is a mutaharik pronoun, then the lam kalima will have sukun. Yes. I think I said it correctly. Yeah, Maybe we won't edit anything. <laughs> Are you with me, brother? If it is a mutaharik pronoun, when I say mutaharik means it has got already a no, already a vowel sign. When I say mutaharik pronoun, it means the pronoun has a vowel sign. Otherwise, I won't be calling it mutaharik. But when it is a mutaharik pronoun, what happens to the lam kalima? It gets sukun, brother. Are you with me now, brothers? <laughs> okay. okay. But don't worry, it was too much to swallow. Okay. Now, when it is a sakin pronoun, then the lam kalima will have vowel. That's all. Huh? Because we are only thinking about Lam Kalima. If I say Mutahari pronoun, it already tells you that there is a harakat on the pronoun. That's why I'm calling it Mutahari. The confusion is that the mind is working. Yeah, and then the Lam Kalima. Because you see the Sukun, they think that is Sakin. Okay, one more time. If it is a mutaharik pronoun, which means the pronoun has a vowel sign, what will happen to lam kalima? Has a sukun. sukun has a sukun. And if it is a sakin pronoun, which means it has a sukun on it, what happens to lam kalima? Has a vowel sign. So this you will remember. Brother, the benefit of this will come in book two. <laughs> book two will teach us three letter verbs. Completely, beautifully. That is the magic of Dr. Saab's book, you know. <coughs> book two will teach us everything that is to be learned uh, for three letter words. And in more than three letter words, we come to uh, book three, you know. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? No. Okay. Now, are you ready to do some more conjugations? Yes. Okay. From your mind, huh? If I write, brothers and sisters, if I write here, Zahaba, and I will write down also, Jalasa, and I will write down also, Raja. These are the four things that Dr. Abdurrahim mentions in the book, book one. I will also, there is a little space here, I will write down Kataba now. Are you with me? Hmm? And just to give you a little flavor, we will also do Shariba. What is the meaning of Shariba? He drank. Always he. Huh? Mashallah. Look at it, Shariba. What is on the Ain Kalima? Shariba. Kasra. Huh? So Ain Kalima has, can have Kasra or Dhamma. Huh? Huh? And then what about uh, the rest of it? They have all Ain Kalima Fata. So again I go back to one thing brothers and sisters. Remember three letter base form Fa Kalima first radical will always be Fata. fata. Lam Kalima third radical will always have makes things very easy brother 
What is on the second radical and kalima? Anything. Anything. All three vowels can come. Huh? Okay, all three vowels can come. But the dhamma, the vowels with dhamma are very few and infrequent, you know. Okay, fine, brother. We start with zahaba. You got to do it mentally now. Ready? Zahaba, then zahaba, then zahabu, then zahabat, then zahabata. Now we come to hunna. What is the, that thing? Zahab, zahabna. What is it? Zahaba became zahab. Huh? Zahabna. Are you with me? And then zahabta. Then zahabtuma. Zahabtum. Zahabti. Zahabtuma. Zahabtunna. Zahabtu. Zahabna. Zahabna, they, feminine, went. Zahabta, you went. Huh? Zahabtum, you all went. I'm now skipping Huma. Huh? Zahabti, sister, you went. Zahabtunna, you all have went. Zahabtu, I went. Zahabna, huh? okay, we went. Huh? Now it's very easy. If I ask you, Brother Hassan, Azahabta el al masjid al yom? Azahabta el al masjid al yom? What is the translation? Azahabta el al masjid al yom? Yes. Huh? If you went, what will you say? What will you say? Naam. What will you say? Zahabtu. I went. Did you get the idea? If I ask you, Sister Salma, Azahabti el al masjid al yom? Naam. Naam. You'll say yes. And what will you use? Zahabtu. That two pronoun will come. We'll practice. We are going to practice. Are you with me? Yes. Huh? Now I am asking you all. Azahabtum huh? ilal al masjid al yom. Did you all go to the masjid today? What will you say? Naam. And what kind of answer will be? Zahabna. See? Now we got to get used to these pronouns. Huh? Practice makes it perfect. You practice, you conjugate. But I, when I started doing this, you know, yesterday says, Dodo Goli, Dodo Goli, yes, pro. If you do every day two conjugation, uh, or more, minimum two, brother, you'll get stronger. You'll become so strong, then it will surprise you. Huh? Okay, so that is it. Zahaba, he went. Zahabat, she went. Huh? Zahabu, they went. We are skipping Humana. Huh? Zahabu, they went. Zahabna, the ladies, they went. Zahabta, you went. Zahabtum, you masculine all went. Huh? Zahabti, she went. Lady, huh? Uh, you went. We are addressing a lady. Zahabtunna. You all went. Zahabtu. I went. I went. Zahabna. We went. We went huh? Okay. Are you with me? So now we come to the point here. Kharajna. Kharajna. Are you with me? Huh? Remember yesterday I said. There is a fiel, the file has to be there. They cannot live without each other. Huh? They cannot live without each other. Fiel and file always live happily together. Huh? If you remove file from the fiel, then there is no fiel. It's destroyed. There is no fiel. They always come together. Okay, fine. It reminds me of a song, you know. You'll have to bear with me, brother. 
This is a song, once upon a time, any time you put on the radio, it would come. But that was in Pakistan. I don't know whether you heard it in India or in Guyana or not, you know. Akele na jana Hame chhod kar tum Tumhare bina hum Bala kya jiyenge Don't leave me alone and go away. The fear is saying to the file. Don't go and leave me alone. Without you I can't survive. Then the file replies the same thing. Don't leave me alone and go away. Because without you I cannot survive. Are you with me? So if there is a fear, there has to be a file. Has to be a file. Okay brother, where is the file in Kharaja? Mostatir. Where is the file in Kharaja? Ali. Where is the file in Kharaju? Where is the file in Kharajat? Mostatir. Ta is ta tanishi. Never ever say file. I got a weak heart. I'll get heart attack. So ta tanishi. File is Mustatir. And then Kharajata. Where is the file? Ali. In Kharajna. Where is the file? Kharajta. Kharajtuma. Tuma. Kharashtum, Kharashti, Kharashtuma, Kharashtunna, Kharashtu, and Kharajna. Na. Now, if I tell you to analyze, uh, we start from here. Where is the verb? Kharaja. Where is the file? Mustatir. Now, if I say Kharaja, where is the verb? Kharaja. That is your verb. Where is the file? Aleph. If I say Kharaju, where is the verb? Kharaju, you will say. You will say Kharaju. And where is the file? Wow. If I say Kharajat, where is the verb? Kharajat. What is this Ta doing here? Ta Otani si. Telling me the doer of the action was a female. Oh, where is the file? Mostatir. Kharajata. Analyze Kharajata. Where is the verb? Kharaja. What is next? Tautani si. Where is the file? Aleph. Now come to Motaharik pronouns from Hunna. Okay? Kharajna. Where is the verb? Say it properly. Kharaj. With sukun. You won't say with? No. You will say kharaj. Kharaj is the verb. And where is the file? Na. Okay. Kharashta. Where is the verb? Kharaj. Where is the file? Ta. If I say Kharaj Tuma, where is the verb? Kharaj. Where is the file? Tuma. Kharaj Tum, where is the verb? Where is the file? Tum. Kharaj Ti, where is the verb? Where is the file? Ti. Kharaj Tuma, where is the verb? Where is the file? Kharaj Tunna, where is the verb? And where is the file? Tunna. Kharaj Tu, where is the verb? Where is the file? Kharajna, where is the verb? And where is the file? Na. Na. Got it, brother and sister? Inshallah, you will find this very easy with little practice. And inshallah, inshallah, you will never ever forget. Okay? Huh? Because you remember, when you make a contract, we just signed a contract with Hunna. So we will always remember that contract. <laughs> now let us try and do Jalasa. Let us try the verbs. Huh? Ready? Jalasa. Next one. Jalasa. Jalasu. Jalasat. Jalasata. Jalasna. Jalasta. Jalastuma. Jalastum. Jalasti. Jalastuma. Jalastunna. Jalastu. Jalasna. No. Now when you do it at home, you are taking extra sheets. When you will write it, write it, inshallah, by Monday you will be fluent, inshallah. Huh? Next one, brother. Raja. Raja. Ah. Raja. Oh. Raja. At. Raja. Ata. Rajana. Rajana. Because Lam Kalima got a sukun. Rajana. Rajata. 
Rajatum. Rajatum. Rajati. Rajatum. Rajatun. Rajatu. Rajatna. Mashallah. Kataba. 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 Katabu. Katabat. Katabata. Katabna. Katabta. Katabtuma. Katabtum. Katabti. Katabtuma. Katabtunna. Katabtu. Katabna. Are you with me? You have to only understand one thing, that you should pronounce these two in such a way that there is a distinction. They should not sound same. Kharajna and Kharajna. Zahabna and Zahabna. Jalasna and Jalasna. Katabna and Katabna. Huh? You have to differentiate between them. Well, I think this is enough for verbs. Now, remember, brother, this is extra. Dr. Abdurrahim doesn't say that these things are to be done because if they were to be done, you would have found them, him mentioning in the key. I am doing this because I feel personally that if we slowly, slowly do verbs side by side, by the time you come into book two, you are so strong already in verbs, you have been studying it for a few weeks, that you will find book two, brother. What will you find book two? If you find book two very easy, what, what, what do I say always? Halwa Puri. Halwa Puri. <laughs> the book two will become Halwa Puri for you. Huh? Because you already know it, brother. Inshallah. Huh? So you will keep this in mind. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can ask me in the break or afterwards. Inshallah. Huh? Now, we come to lesson number five. Huh? Lesson number five is extremely important lesson. And you know, this, this thing was so ex uh, important. We, did, we have been doing it for now two days. And I'm so glad that everybody in the class is present. So you uh, have a good idea of the verbs, you know, the base form, the fa kalima, ain kalima, lam kalima, first radical, second radical, third radical, we discussed. We will be repeating it again and again, brother. Because two verbs we will do it here in that class, every day, inshallah. Practice it. Huh? Fine. Hiya huma hunna, huwa huma hum. Hiya huma hunna, anta antum antum, anta antum antum, anti antum antunna, anti antum antunna, ana nahnu, ana nahnu, huwa huma hum. Hiya huma hunna, huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, <laughs> Inshallah, I will repeat it whenever I feel like, and it will only help you to memorize the 14 pronouns. Now we come to lesson number five. Something very, very important we are learning. Extremely important. Sometimes students get confused. But I hope, inshallah, all of you will understand it very well. Huh? Okay. Possessive case in which the possession is described. Huh, brothers and sisters? How do you describe possession in English? By using of. By using of, you describe position. You use possessive s. What do you use it, brother and sisters? Huh? You use it. You use it. Possessive s. Huh? Okay, brother and sister. You use it. Possessive s. Okay. This is how you describe. Pen of Muhammad. 
और मोहम्मद स्पेल्ड बुक ऑफ मोहम्मद मोहम्मद बुक हाउस ऑफ हामिद हामिद हाउस आर यू विथ मी बदन सिस्टर ओके हाउ डू यू डू इन अरबिक बिकॉज देर इज नो इक्वेलेंट ऑफ ऑफ और पॉजिटिव एस इन अरबिक There is a relation between two nouns, possessive, indicating possession. Okay, but then we have a special construction, and it is called al idafa, al idafa tun. Huh? What is the special indication? Relation, indication. Now this is a technical term, brother. Al idafa tu. Huh? Actually speaking, idafatu means addition or an accession. Okay, but don't worry. Just think about idafa, which represents, you know, possessive case. Idafa represents possessive case. Here is. Kitab. And here is Muhammad. Okay, I can say Al Kitab, the book of Muhammad. So how do I do? How do I make possessive case? Huh? Look at very carefully, brother. Kitabu, hmm? Muhammad, then. If I say Kitabu Muhammad, then what is the translation? Kitab of Muhammad. Book of Muhammad. Got the idea? Huh? Book of Muhammad. Fine. If I say pen of Muhammad, kalamu, Muhammad din, huh? Muhammad. Let me write down properly, brothers and sisters. Let me write down properly. Muhammadin. I think I should not put shadda here. Why am I writing shadda here? No, it's not shadda. No, no. I have to. I have to make it din. I have to make it din properly. Okay. Muhammadin. Kalamu Muhammadin. Uh, if I say house of Muhammad. Baitu Muhammadin. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Huh? There are two nouns in possessive case, or you will say in idafa. There are two nouns. Okay. The first noun is called mudaf. What is it called? Mudafun, you can say. Huh? In possessive case, or you will say in idafa. There are two nouns. Okay. The first noun is called mudaf. What is it called? Mudaf. Mudafun, you can say. Huh? And the second noun is called mudafun ilayhi. But you know, we say mudafun ilayhi. In short, you will always say mudaf ilayhi.
No, it's uh, mudafun ilayhi. Ilayhi. Okay. Ilayhi. Okay. Now we want to go and observe it. I observe here that the mudaf ilayhi, huh? okay, which is also in the key you will find as a possessor. Huh? As a possessor. What do you see, brother? I have been always telling you that Arabic noun declines in three you know, states, cases. It is kasra. So what is it? Majroor. Huh? Then. It is then. Majroor. Always. Always, always, always majroor. Always majroor. What is majroor? Mudaf ilahi. Remember, after harf jar, ism is majroor. And then after mudaf, mudaf ilahi is always Majroor. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Fine. No, 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 there is no half chair here. Off is there. Yeah, but in Arabic there is no off. Huh? That is the preposition in English which is understood here. Yeah, but I, I think we should not take that into consideration. Huh? We, we just go to Mudah Mudafili. Here, brother. What do you see? Yes, brother Farooq. Can you pronounce the first consonant? What is it? Mudafun. Mudafun ilayhi. But we say mudaf ilayhi. Mudafun ilayhi. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Mudafun ilayhi. Fine. Mudafun ilayhi is always, always majroor. Always majroor. Okay? What about mudaf? What do you see in mudaf? It's marfu. But it can be mansub also. And it can be majroor also. It's possible. Hmm? Depending on the situation in the sentence. Okay? But let us now for the time being consider it as a marfu because you see dhamma there. What else do you see? What else? Mashallah, mashallah. There is no al there. So, in other words, rule is mudaf cannot have al. Mudaf, sister Naima, cannot have al. No. It cannot. Mudaf ilahi can have al. Hmm? If I just change this, brother and sister, to look at it, brother. Kitabul Mudarri Si. Are you much always? Huh? Kalamu Al Mudarri Si. Are you with me? Baitu. Al Mudar Ri Si. Are you with me? Whether it is a single kasra or is it a tanween, but it is majroor. Huh? What is majroor, sisters? Mudafilehi. Okay, Mudafilehi is called possessor. What is it called? Possessor. It is all in the key. But I read the key. Huh? Read the key every single day. Keep next to your bedside. Read the key. Huh? And then, brothers and sisters, what is mudaf? It has no al. And it cannot have tanween. It cannot have tanween. No tanween. Huh? It cannot have tanween, brother. Are you with me, Brother Abdul Qadir? Mudaf ilahi is always majroor. It can be definite or it can be indefinite. If it is indefinite, it will have tanween. If it is definite, it will have only single kasra. 
But the mudaf can never have al and can never have tanmi. Can never. That's the rule. So this is your situation of possessive case. Huh? Okay. Tell me how shall I write down book of Allah? Ah, see? Kitabullah hi. Kitabullah hi. How do I say uh, house of Allah? Baitul. We all know Baitullah. You, you always say, but now today you will say Baitullah hi. Huh? Today you will say Baitullah hi. Okay? See, we are learning the proper declension. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? We are learning proper declension. Have you ever thought about this? When you, when you, how do you say Suratul Asr? What is the first ayah? Wal Asr. Have you ever noted down what is written there? It's called Wal Asri. It's Majroor. Huh? But you always say Wal Asr. But look, go home and look. You will find Kasra there. Wal Asri. Why Asri? As a student, we will ask why there is a Kasra. And there has to be a reason. Uh, no, this is different. Right? Okay. I'm only pointing out that there is a Kasra there, but you never notice it. Huh? Inshallah, I'll explain you. And when you will learn this, Sister Salma, uh, you'll be amazed at the beauty of the Quran and also amazed at the, at the fact that you know now what you did not know before. Uh, you will know now what you did not know before. And it will always surprise you. You know, there are so much beautiful things in Quran, we just take it for granted. You know? So, coming, that, uh, brother, uh, I, I was just trying to explain you that when you say Kitabullah, you never say Kitabullahi. Huh? But it is Kitabullah. And I was just giving you an example. Walasr. But it is Walasri. Why? We will, inshallah, check it. It has got no relation with uh, mudaf, mudaf. Idafa, possessive case, is the relation between two nouns, which indicates possession. Huh? In English, we use of or possessive s. Are you with me? Is it correct? How do you say uh, the house of, uh, I say house of teacher. How do you say in English? House of teacher. House of the teacher, or the house of teacher, okay? Uh, the book of teacher, the pen of teacher. Uh, you always say like that, okay? So you use of, or you say teacher's house, teacher's pen, teacher's book. You use possessive S. Are you with me? But in Arabic, we have these two nouns, book and teacher, or book and Muhammad. 